Good morning. My name is John Chaburka. I'm a soil scientist with the USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service. And today we're going to be discussing the Envirothon, the Pennsylvania Envirothon, and specifically talking about soils. Um, it's a very popular uh, uh, youth event that happens statewide. And some counties are, are in so demand that uh, to do individual soils training sessions is very difficult. So we've decided to record these sessions and make them available to high school teachers throughout the county and throughout the state. I want to also introduce Sally Gregory. Sally Gregory is coordinating this event with uh, the Lancaster County Conservation District and uh, we'll get started. There's three parts to uh, the soils station, the soils exam, and we're going to be breaking those three segments into three small training segments. If you uh, remember the, the uh, soils exam for the soil session, uh, the first part is the general nature, the general knowledge of soils. To uh, study for that requires you to go to the Pennsylvania Envirothon website and download the study training materials. And in particular is one, a PDF of the Pennsylvania Soils publication. In there lists all types of definitions and glossary terms and concepts about soils and it is basically studying on your own to know those general principles and knowledge. I'm going to be uh, reviewing some of those today. I've made a handout that's going to be available to the high school Envirothon uh, advisors and science teachers. It's a four page document and it's titled Envirothon Soil Station and we can see this up on the board here as well. And I'm just going to briefly go over some of the highlights of these first few pages. I'm not going to go through it in depth. Uh, you could do that on your leisure. And remember that this is just excerpts from that Pennsylvania Soils publication that's on the Envirothon website. One caveat is if you find any contradictory information from this publication that I'm about to give you and the one that's on the official website, uh, the correct one is the one on the official website. If I have misstated any information in here, please disregard that. The official answer is within those publications located on the website. Uh, with no further ado, then let's get started. Uh, we, we, we talk about what is the definition of soils. You need to understand and know the, that there are five soil forming factors in soil, and they're listed here in our publication. If you can scroll down to uh, the, uh, the lower part of the page, Sally, you'll see that. How are the soils formed? Uh, a little bit more. There we go. Soil forming factors. And there's a little memory trick for that. If you remember CLORPT, C-L-O-R-P-T, that stands for climate, organisms, parent material, topography, and time. And the, the best way I remember doing it is by putting it into a sentence. And I would say over a period of time with a given parent material acted upon it by climate and organisms on a particular topography, a unique soil type is formed. If we change any one of those five soil forming factors, we have a different soil type. Different soil types are named by soil series. Soil series are mapped on a soils map and they generally have a geographic name to their name. For example, in Lancaster County, we will see soils named as Beddington, Duffield, Hagerstown, Linside, and Rowland. We'll be seeing a soils map of those in the third segment of, of this production. Those soil types were first described in a geographic area near those terms. Uh, they, were, they were named after a geographic landscape, either a ridge or a creek or a river or a town. Beddington is a, a small town in Maryland. Duffield is a small town in Maryland as well. Uh, the Berks series is named after Berks County and so on. So those official series have each have their own unique set of soil properties and characteristics because they were formed in unique parent materials in a unique climate with organisms and, uh, and uh, uh, over time and on certain topographies. Again, change any one of those and you have a unique uh, soil series developed. If you could scroll up to the top again to the pie chart, Sally, you'll notice that soils are half of nothing. If we see in our pie chart here, half of that soil is either mineral or organic material, solid material, but the other half is either air or water. 
if those pores or the porosity of that soil is completely filled with water, it is considered to be a saturated soil where 50% of the pore spaces are filled with water. As that soil dries out, air moves in and the porosity becomes more air than water. Ideal soils for crop production have 50% of solids, 50% of pore spaces, and half of those pore spaces are filled with water. So they have 25% water content. Uh, a very important part of the, of the solid part of soil is the very small pie uh, slice here of the organic matter. Organic matter plays a tremendous role in the productivity and health of a soil. Although it's in by weight the, the lowest quantity that you would find in the composition of soil, it's by far and away the most important. Uh, soils that are healthy soils have higher levels of organic matter and we want to keep them that way. We don't want to be eroding them away. So uh, Sally, we're kind of going backwards, but uh, you're good there. I can see that the soil's definition is on our chart. If you notice, the five soil forming factors are listed in the definition of soil. So when if, if you uh, encounter a soil definition question on your exam, they will be looking for your knowledge of knowing what those five soil forming factors are. So let's move forward here to uh, the bottom of this page and, it and they, they uh, address the major types of parent materials. That's a really key word, parent material. It's the material by which the soil formed from. Soils form from different rocks. They also form from organic material as well. Uh, so a rock type is not a parent material, but you'll see by my example that we're looking for other terms like residuum, colluvium, alluvium, glacial deposits, wind or water deposits, and also marine sediments. So if, if uh, a question was posed, what do the Duffield parent material, what are the soils, the Duffield soils uh, formed from? If you wrote down limestone, you wouldn't be entirely correct. Limestone is a rock type, but Duffield is formed from residuum of limestone. The definition of residuum are the soils that were formed from the rock below. So understand that parent materials are either formed in place, residuum, or they're transported materials. Colluvium is our materials that, that formed from uh, a movement of gravity down slope. Those soils form very unique properties and we have a lot of them in Pennsylvania, especially in the Appalachian Ridge and Valley provinces. At the base of all of our mountains in the Ridge and Valley, we have soils formed in colluvium and they form dense impermeable horizons called fragipans that uh, perch water and turn tree roots and they are less productive. And you'll notice that much of the ridges in our ridge and valleys are not in agricultural production because of that. Other types of parent material are water transported materials. If they were deposited by floods, they would be called alluvium. If they were deposited by deep marine sediments, they would be called lacustrine or um, uh, marine sediments. If they were blown by wind, we have two types. We have a soil um, a parent material called luss, which are silty materials transported by wind. And then we have also uh, sandy materials transported by wind and they are called aeolian deposits. So understand the difference between parent material and rock type. Um, don't confuse the two and you should be good on your exam. Let's move on to the next page. So if we see a soil type in place, if I dug a hole and, and excavated out this profile of soil, and that's what we call this is a soil profile. Another term for it is called the pedon, P-E-D-O-N. They are both synonymous. We would see that these, uh, we can have regular repeating patterns of horizontal layers in the soil. Those parallel layers to the surface are called soil horizons. Typically we have a topsoil horizon at the surface. Topsoil horizons are, are characterized by being dark. They're dark due to the accumulation of organic matter. 
organic matter accumulates in soils by the living and dying and decomposition of, of plants and animal roots at the surface. These are called our A horizons. Generally, once we go through the topsoil, the soil stops becoming dark, and now it becomes um, not dark. We lose the organic matter, and they often become shades of red, orange, or yellow. These are called our subsoil horizons, and we designate them as the B horizons. If you dig through those B horizons deep enough, eventually those soil horizons don't have that soil development. They lose the reddish color, they, don't, uh, they, they lose the amount of clay in them, and they start to resemble the parent material by which they were formed. Layers that have a slight amount of soil development that are near the parent material are called sea horizons. That's called the substratum. We have topsoil, subsoil, substratum. In this example, if this soil was formed from bedrock underneath, it would be a residual parent material of bedrock, and we would have an A horizon, a B horizon, a C horizon, and then once we encountered bedrock, it would be an R horizon. R would designate bedrock. Scroll down, please, Sally. Here's a, a simplified version of that. Um, I'm going to talk about the O and the E horizons very shortly. But here are the A horizons, the B horizons, the C horizons, and the R horizons of a residual soil type. Only those residual soil types formed in residuum would have an R horizon. Um, uh, if, if we have soils that are formed in colluvium, for example, it would probably just be a C horizon and we would probably never encounter the hard bedrock underneath. There are other some major horizons that we would encounter depending on if the soil, uh, what the land use the soil is undergoing. If a soil is still has a land use that's uh, very passive, that it's in woodland, for example, it may have an O horizon up here. An O horizon is a horizon that is dominated by organic soil materials. There's very little mineral soil materials in it. If you remember that little slice of the pie, that one to 5% organic matter, well, it gets up to 25% organic matter. So it's very dark, it's usually jet black, it stains your hands, and it's very light. If you hold it in your hand, it feels like a sponge. Those would be our O horizons. Also, another horizon that we see in woodland oftentimes is the E horizon. An E horizon is a subsurface horizon. It's part of the subsoil. But because, and it's usually found in, again, forested situations and specifically in conifer forests, in pine woods, in hemlock woods. The reason what happens is that those pine trees exude a high, highly acidic organic acid. Those organic acids strip all the organic matter and they strip all the clay out of the soil and it makes a very bright white colored sandy E horizon. Only if you're in forested situations would you usually encounter an O or an E horizon. If you're out in a cornfield, you would expect to find A, B, and C horizons. All right, Sally, let's scroll to the next page. And the next page shows a triangle. We're going to be going over uh, in a very uh, um, in-depth in session three the use of the textural triangle. But what I wanted to point out to you right now is just above the triangle is uh, the different soil particle sizes that are in soils. If we feel soils, we can feel that some are gritty, they have a lot of sand in them. If they feel smooth, they have a lot of silt in them. And if they feel sticky, they have a lot of clay in them. Those are the three particle sizes, sand, silt, and clay. Sand is the largest particle by far, and clay is the smallest, silt being the middle particle. Between your thumb and forefingers, if you were to feel soil, if you felt any individual particles of soil, those are sand particles. Silt and clay particles are so small that you cannot feel them between your thumb and your forefinger. Uh, you would have to look at a silt particle under a 100 power microscope. Clay particles can only be seen, individual clay particles can only be seen with an electron microscope. So those are the three different sizes of particles. 
And again, we will skip this part right now because we're going to be going over a soil textural demonstration in the third session. So that would move on to other soil properties that are important to know. In most envirothons in the county, and definitely the state envirothon, not only will you be going over general knowledge of soils and learning how to use the web soil survey to find information, but you will be walking into a soil pit and you will be feeling soils and you will be estimating soils, but not only are you gonna estimate the textures of soils, you're also gonna be estimating the structure of soils, identifying different horizons in soils, identifying if there are lithologic discontinuities or, or um, uh, um, abrupt textural changes, and lastly, identifying the soil depth of soils. So this is a very important one here is soil structure. Some soils have structures that are granular that look like small coffee grounds. Typically you see those in topsoils. Uh, we have granular structure. Subsoils or B horizons oftentimes have blocky structure, subangular or angular blocky structure. If we have a soil that has undergone a lot of compaction at the surface, we can see topsoils that have platy structure. Those soils that I was talking about formed in colluvium in the Ridge and Valley at the bases of the mountains have platy structure in their subsoils because they're very dense. So these are examples of looking at the structural units of, of different soil types within a soil profile. And then if we move on to the next page, we could talk about soil color. Soil color is very unique in that we use a standardized system called the Munsell Soil Color System to identify soil colors. This is very similar to going to your local uh, uh, home store and picking out paint chips and buying paint to paint the walls of your house. Those paint chips are, use the same color notation system. You'll notice that most colors in Pennsylvania go from shades of red to shades of yellow. So what you would do is pick out which page between red and yellow the soil sample is identified with, and then you would actually take a sample of moist soil and in sunlight hold the book perpendicular to the sunlight and match up the sample of soil to the chip. And then you would uh, denote the color by the page 2.5 YR, its value is 5, and its chroma of 4. And that's how you would use this book. We'll probably go into further detail with this in the session two segment of this presentation. I'm going to uh, uh, move on to soil pH and soil survey and we'll end there. Soil pH is the alkalinity or acidity of a soil. It's very important for crop production. Uh, there's many agro agronomic crops that are, that are very sensitive to the pH of a soil. Typical pHs of soil um, hover around the neutral. Uh, low pHs, this is a scale of 0 to 14. The most acidic soils would be at uh, uh, an acidity lower than 7, possibly like 4.5. And our most alkaline soils go above neutral into the alkaline side to about a pH of 8. The ideal pH for most soils for crop production is a pH of 7. And lastly, uh, I'm just, just going to be a segue to our second segment today and talking about the soil survey. The soil survey is completed for every county in Pennsylvania and actually in the United States. Traditionally, the soil survey was a hardbound copy similar to this in Lancaster County. And part of the, the second part of the Envirothon test was to prove your proficiency with pulling information out of this book. We no longer use this book because we've come into the 21st century and we use the Web Soil Survey. In the second session, we'll be using a printout report from the Web Soil Survey to test your proficiency of finding soils information through the Web Soil Survey. So that ends this session one of the Soils Envirothon session.